Good morning, I'm Ilka Osa. Morning, I'm Jo Drennan. So, do you think we train our children to not be honest with us? Well, I know that I did that. I recall a great story once of, um, well, well, firstly, honesty was expressed as a high value in our home. And um, how the kids knew the importance of being, honesty, being honest. And then there was one day I went shopping for one of my kids, brought some clothes without them, brought them home, and um, she didn't like them. And she basically told me that she didn't like them. How dare she them. not like oh, the clothes out, you bought? Outrageous. And she got in trouble, which was kind of about um, getting in trouble for, oh, how dare you not appreciate, be grateful, all that sort of thing. But mm. really, I think, like, did I want to confuse her? On one hand, I'm saying, you know, we highly value honesty. And on the other hand, don't be honest with me if it's going to offend me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in hindsight, sorry, sorry to my child for that one. Yeah, I was asking my daughter about this last night in the car and I said, was there anything that you couldn't be honest with me about when you were growing up? And she was like, oh yeah, we never told you about all the sweets and things that we ate because I was such a health Nazi and I never had sugar in the house. So if they went out and um, ate lollies or something like that, they used to just hide it from me. Um, I did used to find what lolly wrappers under the bed and of course I would get really cranky and angry at them so of course I was training them into um it's not safe to be able to tell me these things even though for me yeah honesty is one of my highest values I I want my kids to be honest with me and and yet that's what I was doing uh, yeah we think we're doing <laughs> where does doing it the come right from thing. where does it where come, it come from, from well, in our own childhood did you experience yeah, well, ah, well for me, um, it was very much about um, about not speaking up. Not I learned to not be honest, basically to not be honest with myself. Honest um, mm. for for many years, my childhood, my adult years, um, I would uh, go through these just having a conversation with people. I'd go through these thoughts in my mind and uh, and not say things. Purposely question. Oh, should I say that? Shouldn't I say that? How would they respond to that? You know, I'm I'm always preempting their responses and then choosing to not say anything and silence is just as dishonest as telling a lie yeah yeah it is and i think um it's like that that another example is when you uh, go to a family gathering or whatever and you ask your kids to give auntie mary a hug you know and the week before you're basically maybe giving them a lecture on the importance of not letting people touch them and all of that. And then you're angry when they're not um, showing open appreciation for not wanting to, or not, they don't want to hug Annie Mary and they're not really happy about it, but we're angry with them. So, so, yeah, <laughs> so how they behave socially. <laughs> We've got the big man here. How, how they, sometimes how they look, how they behave socially is more important than being honest. So we really have to get clear on where our value lay. Yeah, and I think that's what, from, from talking about this this morning, Joe and I have really realised that, that this is where our monkey mind came from. It was like we, we, had, we had all of this going on because there was a polite way to say things there was always a right way of doing something and it, it was usually our parents' way of doing it. So even though they were trying to keep us safe in the social norms and that, that was what I was doing with my children as well when I was asking them to say please and thank you all the time and all the things we get our children to do, but, but, it, but it, it turned my mind into a monkey mind because I was, I, was, I was always questioning what's right to say. And the biggest message we're getting across with this is that our own honesty was left way, way, way back on the shelf. The mind's going flat stitch. Yeah. So, yeah. so I know, talk about what you did. To fir the first time you started to actually be able to speak your own mind. <laughs> well, I took some pretty drastic steps, uh, but it, it, I was at 47 and I decided to do improv comedy. And the main reason I decided to do this is because when you, um, you turn up, it's about uh, just going with your first thought. And, you know, this stopped me. I, I knew that I wouldn't be allowed to overthink. 
and also that um, one of the rules in improv comedy is that you look after your partner. So we're in teams and nothing I could say would ever be wrong. I could say anything. I could swear. I could anything. And in fact, they and used to say, and yes, yes like, yes, and keep going. Partner, yeah, 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 your partner would go, and yes, and, <laughs> and then and keep going. And then the back and forth banter and, um, and you just, you just, you supported your partner. So this was giving me a safe space to express whatever came into my mind and mm. not being concerned, not preempting, not overthinking, how will they respond? And this was brilliant. I was freeing, I was very oh, freeing. Freeing, freeing. I was, yeah. It was so far out of my comfort zone. But what I found interesting when I started doing it, I did it for eight weeks. It was a three hour round trip every, um, <laughs> every week. Um, what changed was the conversations I had with my children, uh, even after the first week, because we used to do crazy stuff like m move your body and stuff. You really ha had to let go of um, looking silly, making mistakes. And I found that as I became less judgmental of myself, I also became less judgmental of my kids and our conversations became easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it, because it really is all about our ability to be honest with ourselves and um, for me I had a when we were talking about this this morning I realized that it was a similar thing for me when I started Faster EFT it was a safe place for me to actually be honest about my emotions and not um, judge I mean I even thought there's a tiny bit still there because last week when I was talking about my father not picking me up from school um, even though now that doesn't bother me anymore, but there's a tiny little bit of judgment seeped in, um, but from the old, the old days, because now I'm saying these things publicly, but um, because, we, we, yeah, it's really ingrained this thing of judging ourselves for what, we, how we feel. But Fast Group Key was where I could sit with somebody and go back to how it really felt to be abandoned at school. And by going into those feelings as well, and the thoughts about those feelings and being able to freely express them, it really, it really was freeing. I could be honest with myself for the first time and um, really start to become a, start to actually know who I am. Yeah? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty amazing stuff. And yeah. I think on the other side of honesty is a lot of joy, a lot of freedom, even though it's scary as hell to go there at the start. It's, it's extremely <laughs> scary. Like I, I completely understand the stats on um, public speaking and people choosing, the majority of people would choose death over public speaking. Yeah. I recall what would go on inside my body. Just It was like my blood was boiling. And this is simple conversations where I disagreed with somebody and mm. I could not speak up. I, re I remember being 14 years old and um, I had a friend who was a boy and I thought we were just friends and he sat next to me one day and he held my hand and I was I couldn't say anything yet inside my blood was boiling I didn't want this to happen because you wanted him you didn't I, want him to yeah I, di I didn't want him to hold my hand I thought we were just friends but I couldn't say anything so then yeah. after that incident I just avoided him I uh, rather than be honest and mm. and things simple things like that like the Arnie Mary story is you know what are we teaching our kids to to to, to not speak up and, and be truthful mm. be, because of the social conditioning we place on them and how, how it's more important about how we look in society or how, how we say please and thank you rather than being honest. Yeah, yeah, honest. I love that. I love how honest kids are and I think we can learn a lot from them. <laughs> we can, we can. We definitely can. They're yeah. teaching us how to be joyful, how to be silly, how to be... Um, all those amazing things that we can get to again once we start, I, I really believe, once we start being honest with ourselves. Yes, so yeah, if yeah, we've that got joy the courage, go there. Yeah, the joy and creativity of a child when we yeah. look at those two and three year olds and, and, mm. and see how happy they are. We, we can get that back as adults. Definitely. Don't wait 47 years <laughs> old. <laughs> like reading. <laughs> Start, start asking honest questions of, of yourself, yourself today. Yeah. And that's a really good way to start. It's just to think, well, how do I know what I'm feeling now? Just 
a simple question like that and keep diving deeper and deeper on it. Yeah, it can get scary. Um, there's, there's techniques and tools that you can use. I use tapping um, to, to really get you through this. But on the other side of it is just the most amazing life. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thanks yeah. for joining us yeah. again here at Malulaba Beach. And we'll see you next Wednesday. And, oh, inspire your children today. Through being your true self. Yeah. Bye.